The new easy to master Dungeons and Dragons game, usually called the Black Box by fans. Although I used to call it the Big Black Box with the giant red dragon on front. Clearly I was a creative child. I have a lot of fun memories with this beauty. Much of my early experiences with Dungeons and Dragons was with this box, so when I saw it pop up in a store in near mint condition, I just had to pick it up and own it for myself. My brother got his copy of the Black Box back in 91. Back then we already knew of D&D, our cousins were really into it and had some of the earlier editions, so this wasn't the first edition I played, but this was the first one that we had at home in my family. So it was pretty much the one that I learned the game from before moving on to second edition. Now the black box is essentially a starter edition of D&D and used the D&D basic ruleset. Back in this edition you were limited in what classes you could play. There was fighter, cleric, rogue and magic user, all of which meant you were playing a human. If you wanted to play a non-human, then the other races were classes. You could pick between a few demi-humans, as they referred to as. Uh, namely, dwarf, elf, and halfling. The dwarf was essentially a fighter, and the halfling was pretty much a rogue. The elf was a little bit more unique, since they were essentially a mix between a magic user and a fighter, but leveled much slower. It was one of the big game-balancing tools they had back then. Each class would level at their own pace, so some classes could be more powerful, but would be a lot harder to level up. Of course, when everyone hit max level, that system pretty much fell apart. In the black box, you could level up to level 5, although I'm not sure a lot of my characters ever got that far. We tended to run the same starting adventures over and over again, and would often use the pre-made characters that came with the expansions released later. Leveling also took a lot longer than it does in modern D&D. The later expansions had several adventures in them, uh, those pre-generated characters I talked about, and felt much more like pre-packaged campaigns. But the black box was geared more towards making your own characters, dungeons and adventures. The box came with a small rulebook, but it wasn't meant to be used for more than reference than anything else, really. Inside of the Dungeon Master screen, you have this huge stack of cards that walk you through the first adventure and teach you how to play the game. It's meant to be played solo by a hopeful DM at first, and then Gradually, after it has taught you the game, it introduces you to how to DM, and invite your friends over, and how to help them to create their characters, and basically teaches you how to teach them the game. As you go through your first adventure, you or your players will find yourself in the dungeons of the evil wizard Sansor Tem. You have to band together with your fellow prisoners and escape. It's, it's pretty straightforward dungeon crawl, but it does a great job of teaching you D&D. Not entirely surprising, but dungeon crawls were a big focus for this particular edition of D&D. The book mentions other things, of course, but you very much get the impression that cities are places you go to to gear up or find quests before heading into new dungeons, and wilderness is just something you need to cross to get to the next crawl. What surprised me a little as I was looking over this old box set again is just how D&D it feels. I often thought back on it as being a bit of a board game, something simple and easy that I outgrew, but to be honest, I could probably have almost as much fun running a campaign with this rule set as I have these days running 5th edition. I've forgotten about a lot of the tips on how to expand your adventures and the many creative monsters they describe. As far as starter sets for roleplaying games go, this one easily rivals any of the Fantasy Flight Star Wars ones and probably beats the Stranger Things D&D one. The modern D&D stars have a lot more detailed and epic adventures in them that last longer, but I think this whole thing was a lot better at getting you to create your own characters and stories, and as such had a lot more lasting value. The rules are simple compared to, say, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but are still very solid and presented in a way that makes them very easy to understand. I'm sure everyone has heard of the infamous Thaco, for instance. That was the old way you used to calculate if you hit, and it stood for to hit armor class zero. It's been a butt of many jokes, and a lot of people have been confused by it over the years, but it's actually very simple. Your FACO is based on your class level, and when you attack something, you roll a d20. Add any hit modifiers you might have, and you add the AC of the monster you're attacking. If you roll equal to or higher than your FACO, you hit. Suddenly when you think of AC as a hit modifier, a negative AC doesn't sound so crazy. And a FACO is essentially just a target number, something modern role players are quite familiar with. The game came with a lot of sweet components. You got a very practical but arguably hideous DM screen, a sweet poster map of Sansor Time's dungeon, and a whole series of paper monster standees. Now this guy, George the Jailer, he was my favorite monster as a kid. For some reason I believed he was a cobble back then, but he's actually a hobgoblin. 
I have no idea why I thought he was such a badass monster. Probably because he had a unique standee, he was a named character, and he's the first monster you run into. Or maybe he just reminded me of Slife from Thundercats. I always felt it was a bit cheap that some of these standees had different monsters on each side. I mean, it was cool that you got more monster variants in the box because of this, but it kind of sucked if you wanted to feature an encounter that had both gnolls and slaves in it, for example. You also got standees for all the player classes, but these suffered from a similar problem. Each class standee had a male and a female side, and it was good that they included character options for both genders, but it kind of sucked that you only had one standee per class, so if two people wanted to play a magic user in the same group, you were kind of humped. The later expansions would somewhat fix these. Those standees would usually only feature one character, and have one side as a shadowy profile of the character, which would also allow you to easily see which way a person was facing. The box I got a hold of had all of its standees still unpunched and unused. I'm the kind of barbarian, however, who will totally punch them all out and use them. Things are meant to be used and touched. A sealed box never gives me any joy. The later expansions released for Black Box actually came with all kinds of things like tokens and doors that would flesh out your dungeons in style. The funny thing is, I borrowed some of these tokens from my brother a few years back, and I still use them for my 5th edition games today. I think they still look great, and they're really practical to use when someone is disarmed to show where the weapon lands, or to place important items or hazards on the battlefield. I even used the Bat Swarm token from them when I ran my Tomo, Tomo Annihilation game a few years back. Swarms actually work very well as tokens, since they often move into other creatures' spaces. I'm not sure if I will ever play the Black Box again. I have a lot of nostalgia for it and those old rules, and I love the designs used in D&D back then, but 5th edition is just so convenient and well established, and it's the game most players want to play. And I have to say, I prefer to be able to choose a class for my Elf or Halfling. I have however been thinking of running through Sansor Tam's dungeon at least one more time, although with more modern rules. I would love to get to pull out the dungeon map and get to use some of my standees. I definitely want to try to get my hand on the other expansions they released. I remember some of those adventures as being quite great, and I would love to read through them once more. Time will tell, I guess. For now, the black box gets a place of honor on my shelf, and each time I look up at it, it makes me smile as I think about all the great adventures it's given me, and how much better my life is because this has been in it. And as always, if you enjoyed this little nostalgia trip, then please like this video. And don't forget to press the bell icon if you subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. If you want to support the channel, then please share this video on social media, it really helps out a lot. You can also follow me on Tumblr or Twitter, or check out my DMs Guild page. Links to all of that in the description below. Until next time, Dungeon Delvers. The evil wizard Sansur Tam stands before you. What do you do? I cast Magic Missile.